Thank you. The chair recognizes Frank Page, President and CEO of the Executive Committee for a report. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome to Phoenix again. I trust you're enjoying the hospitality of this great city, the sixth largest city in the United States of America. People are moving to Phoenix from all over the world. Having gone out on one of the teams with one of the seminaries on Saturday night, I can attest to the diversity of this great city as I went door to door and met people from many different cultures. This is why Southern Baptists are actively planting churches and doing evangelistic work throughout Phoenix and the greater Phoenix area. We are very excited to be back here. It was in 2011, we were here last time, my first year, uh, first full year in this role. And so in the executive committee report, we come excited to be here. We are excited to bring you the executive committee recommendations on some important business matters for your consideration. Please remember that sometimes motions that come forth are presented to the executive committee and are presented back to you, either accepted, declined, or referred in some fashion. We do uh, a, we have a, a process for dealing with issues that come forth in the annual convention. Sometimes those come from our own executive committee. Nonetheless, we're excited to bring to you some motions, recommendations on important business matters. If you want to look along in your book of reports, three or four of you will do that. It is found on pages four through 38 for you four that care about such things. Mr. President, at this time, I would like to, well, actually, I hear a few more pages turning. Someone got under conviction. I would like to introduce, Mr. President, Dr. Stephen Rummage, at this time, who will be introducing members of the executive committee to bring forth 11 executive committee recommendations. And Dr. Rummage, because we do all things in order, where I think we're going to start with number nine. Yes, but sir. go ahead, Dr. Rummage. Thank you so much. Mr. President, the executive committee has 11 recommendations to bring to the convention today. And as Dr. Page indicated, we will begin with executive committee recommendation number nine. The Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, convention approval for possible future sale of the SBC building. This recommendation is found in your SBC bulletin, page 4. Mr. President, I move the adoption of recommendation number 9. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number nine. Are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many as are in favor of adopting recommendation number nine, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. Those opposed, raise your ballots. Lower your ballots. The affirmative has it. Recommendation number nine is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Roland Slay, Chairman of the Cooperative Program Committee, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13th. 2017 to adopt executive committee recommendation number one, the 2017-18 proposed SBC program allocation budget. This recommendation can be found in the SBC book of reports on page 30. I move the adoption of recommendation number one. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number one. Are you ready for the question? As many are as in favor of adopting recommendation number one, would you please raise your ballots? Lower your ballots. Those opposed, please raise your ballots. Please lower your ballots. 
The affirmative has it. Recommendation number one is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Wayne Robertson, Vice Chair of the Business and Finance Committee, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, to adopt the Executive Committee recommendation number five, IMB request to change its fiscal year. This recommendation is found in your 2017 Book of Reports, page 35. I move the adoption of recommendation number five. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number five. Are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many are, as are in favor of adopting recommendation number five, would you please raise your ballots? Lower your ballots. Those opposed, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it, and recommendation number five is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Stephen Swafford, Chairman of the Business and Finance Committee, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, to adopt Executive Committee Recommendation Number 2, 2017-18 Proposed Executive Committee and SBC Operating Budget. This recommendation is found on page 31 of your Book of Reports, and I move the adoption of Recommendation Number 2. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number two. Are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many as are in favor of adopting recommendation number two, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. Those opposed, raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it, and recommendation number two is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Philip Herring, Chairman of the Convention Ministries Work Group, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017 to adopt Executive Committee Recommendation Number 8, SBC Calendar of Activities and Amendments. This recommendation is found in your 2017 Book of Reports, page 37. I move the adoption of Recommendation Number 8. The question is on the adoption of Recommendation Number 8. If, are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many as are in favor of adopting Recommendation number eight, would you please raise your ballots? You may lower your ballots. Those opposed, likewise, if you'll raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it, and recommendation number eight is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Tim Oles member of the Administrative Committee, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, to adopt Executive Committee recommendation number four, amendment of SBC Business and Financial Plan 19, Film Publication and Merchandising Policy. This recommendation is found in your S, uh, 2017 SBC Book of Reports, page 34. I move the adoption of recommendation number four. All right. Question is on the adoption of recommendation number four. Are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many as are in favor of adopting recommendation number four, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. 
Those opposed, raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it. And recommendation number four is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Kent Choate, Chairman of the Administrative Committee, who will bring the next Executive Committee recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, to adopt the Executive Committee recommendation number three, amendment of SBC bylaw 18, the Executive Committee, Section A, expanding representation. This recommendation is found in your 2017 Book of Reports, page 32. I move the adoption of recommendation number three. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number three. Are you ready for the question? As many as are in favor of adopting recommendation number three, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. Those opposed, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it. Recommendation number three is adopted. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Robin Harry, Chair of the Convention Arrangements Work Group, who will bring the next recommendation. Mr. President, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention recommends to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Phoenix, Arizona, June 13, 2017, to adopt Executive Committee Recommendation Number 6, Number 7, and Number 10, SBC Annual Meeting Future Convention Site 2026 and 2028 and 2025. Recommendation number six and number seven are found in your 2017 SBC Book of Reports, page 37. Recommendation number 10 can be found in the SBC Bulletin, page four. I move the adoption of recommendation number six, number seven, and number 10. The question is on the adoption of recommendations number six, seven, and 10. Are you ready for the question? Go ahead. As many as are in favor of adopting recommendations number six, seven, and 10, would you please raise your ballots? Lower your ballots. Those opposed, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it and these recommendations are adopted. Mr. President, our final recommendation is a resolution of appreciation for Registration Secretary James H. Wells. You will find this recommendation on page five of the SBC Bulletin. Mr. President, I move the adoption of recommendation number 11. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number 11. Are you ready for the question? Ask microphone number four if he has an amendment to recommendation 11. Microphone, microphone number four, do you have an amendment to recommendation number 11? I had a question. Would it be possible when the executive committee brings these recommendations to the convention that a some form of explanation on each of them could be offered so that the messengers would be better informed on making the decisions to approve or disapprove? We will receive that. We will receive that as a recommendation to the executive committee as a, as a request. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. The question is on the adoption of recommendation number 11. As many as are in favor of adopting recommendation number 11, would you please raise your ballots? You may lower your ballots.
Those opposed, please raise your ballots. You may lower your ballots. The affirmative has it, and recommendation number 11 is adopted. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, messengers. Uh, as you've dealt with these issues, please remember that we hold your trust tightly and we cherish it. This is a deliberative body, the largest openly deliberative body that still exists. But know that the executive committee also deliberates carefully at multiple levels dealing with each of the issues before they're ever presented to you from small groups to medium size to the large plenary sessions. And believe me, our executive committee members are not rubber stampers. They ask questions, they deliberate, they discuss, and sometimes disagree. So know that we hold your trust carefully and we count it to be precious. Mr. President, I would like to speak to the last resolution, the last motion that was made. It would be my honor to present this resolution of appreciation to Jim Wells in person. But Jim, as we've already heard, is battling an advanced stage of cancer and is unable to be present. His first year of service, by the way, was in Phoenix. Jim has no backup in him. He had hoped against hope to be here to conclude his service in Phoenix. He and his wife Judy are a precious and godly couple who established a Christian home. We love them. We miss them here today. For those who don't know Jim personally, I want to draw your attention to the final whereas that's found in the resolution and read it aloud, just one section. Whereas Jim Wells has fought a long and courageous battle with cancer that only recently impeded his capacity to continue as registration secretary, expressing as recently as Friday, June 9, 2017, that though the doctor has said he has only a few days left on this earth, Jim said, I am, quote, confident in these final hours that God is in control, end quote and that he is, quote, looking forward to a day when we will worship at the feet of Jesus together, end quote, and that he intends to devote his remaining time praying for the lost. That is Jim Wells. What an amazing testimony of confidence and devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ. What an amazing man. I pray that if you would allow me, Mr. President, in our in this moment to pray for Judy, his wife, and for Jim, as you already have. But I would just like to, for us to bow as we have adopted this resolution of appreciation for Jim Wells. So if you would pray with me, please. Father God, in Jesus' name, you've already heard our prayer. We know that. But once again, we plead your mercy upon our brother in Christ and his dear wife, Judy. Thank you for their service over these years. And we pray in Jesus' name that as the master physician, you would visit him powerfully and closely. We love him and Judy, and we lift them to your throne today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Mr. President, it's also been brought to my attention that uh, we have on the platform Dr. Tommy Green who is the relatively new executive director of the Florida Baptist Convention. And I've been told he has a presentation that he would like to make to us today. So, Dr. Green, would you join me right here, please, and uh, share with us this presentation. Dr. Page and Dr. Gaines and messengers of the Southern Baptist Convention, the pastors who are assembling on the platform represent our Florida Baptist family, among many who are seated across the convention center. Florida Baptists enthusiastically made a decision concerning cooperative program distribution in the year 2015. Prior to this decision, Florida retained 59% of cooperative program gifts of our churches within our state. 
The decision made in 2015 led to a paradigm shift which changed our cooperative program formula to releasing 51 percent to the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention and retaining 49 percent of cooperative program dollars in Florida. This decision of sending more than we keep of cooperative program dollars from our churches has resulted in a reversal of a decade-long decline in cooperative program dollars in Florida. We're now trending upward and we continue to rejoice in a $3 million increase from Florida Baptist churches to the Southern Baptist Convention Cooperative Program just this past year. Florida Baptist Ministries continue at a high level, and we're grateful also to report a 4.5% increase in baptisms through Florida Baptist churches this past year. 5149 is more than a business plan, but it is a consistent driving missions mandate for Florida Baptist. And we recently completed the sale of our Florida Baptist Convention offices located in downtown Jacksonville. The property sold for $6,150,000. And we committed 51% of the proceeds of the sale of this building to the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention. This gift is over and above our regular CP giving and specific to the sale of this property. This morning, we gather in this place to joyfully present this remittance of 51% from the sale of the building to the Southern Baptist Convention of the Cooperative Program, which totals $3,136,500. And our prayer is that God will multiply these dollars just as the loaves and the fish in taking the good news of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And Dr. Page, we want to thank you for the time and the privilege of presenting this gift to the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention on behalf of the 3,000 plus incredible Florida Baptist churches. Thank you so much to Dr. Tommy Green and to these Florida Baptist pastors who have gathered behind me. I wake up every day and pray that what we do will make sure that every man, woman, boy and girl on the face of the earth gets a chance to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what Florida Baptists have done will go to make that happen more surely than ever before. This money will go straight to the mission field just as soon as we can get to it and account for it. So God bless you, Dr. Tommy Green and Florida Baptist pastors. There are many, obviously, they are not up here, but these represent the godly, great pastors of Florida Baptist Convention. And so on behalf of all Southern Baptists and for the sake of the gospel, thank you, Dr. Tommy Green and Florida Baptist Convention. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you so much, pastors. What a joy. What a joy. We've never had that happen before, and that is such a blessing and encouragement, and we thank God for that. Mr. President, also, as you are aware, since I uh, arrived in this position in 2010, it's been my joy to reach out to and relate to a number of subsets of persons within our conventions, many of whom have not been as involved and connected as we would wish. And so beginning the second day of my tenure, actually, I began appointing advisory councils to assist, to advise, to inform, and to involve Southern Baptists in deeper connection. These subgroups, these subsets of people have been precious persons with whom to work it has been my joy, even last yesterday and last night, I visited with Native American churches represented here among us. I visited with uh, African American leaders and churches represented here among us. Last night I also visited with 
uh, Hispanic and Latino leaders representing churches who are here among us today. And also I visited with Asian American leaders and church leaders last night as well. It was a busy evening, but I thank God for each of them and others that I've not even mentioned that I will be visiting with at other times. But in 2015, Mr. President, I appointed a Women's Ministry Advisory Council. I had a deep conviction that women were under-involved in our SBC processes. By the way, brothers and sisters, women make up 52 to 53 percent of our entire Southern Baptist population. And God gifts women according to his biblical roles, but those gifts that he has given them must be utilized in his kingdom. We know women can minister so beautifully to each other, and we wanted to find a way to find out what's, what were the best practices and just encourage women in their involvement of ministry to each other and in the kingdom of God. So I ask Dr. Rhonda Kelly, please come over here, Dr. Kelly, who is standing beside me to lead this group of women. And if the others would come beside, uh, behind her, please, also. I ask Dr. Kelly, who is standing with me, to lead this group of ladies to complete an entire study. Yesterday, downstairs in the Many Faces booth of our Southern Baptist exhibits, this group presented me with a report of their findings, their suggestions, their action steps, which will now begin the implementation phase. And so we're excited to utilize the gifts God has given women to advance the cause of the gospel. Rhonda, I want to thank you personally for leading so capably for this council's work, for your leadership with this group. This report will be re released and posted at sbc.net. That's a name you should remember, sbc.net. And it will be released and available for all of you to see and hold us accountable for the implementation of these suggestions in this report. And so I want to say, ladies, thank you so much. God bless you. I appreciate you so very much. Let's give them a round of applause, and especially Dr. Kelly. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for your support. Thank you, ladies. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And others couldn't be here, but we appreciate those that could come and be here. Now, are you listening carefully? Three years ago, I know your memory is short, but three years ago, I presented to you a young couple as a part of our executive committee report. Keith and Paige Weezer, who felt God leading them to plant a church among college students in the Northwest, to start a church on the campus of the Washington State University. Now, you may pause a moment and say, why is the executive committee talking about all these things because it's our job to promote and if we're promoting the work of the North American Mission Board we're happy if we're promoting the work of the IMB we're happy if we're lifting high theological education moral advocacy and all the other entities and agencies we are delighted and so we like to focus on certain things to show you what happens with the dollars your churches give to missions and ministries through the cooperative program. I like you to put a face on missions. Now listen to me. As I travel, I hear sometimes people say, we just wish there was a face on the cooperative program. What's wrong with you? It has a face and I'm fixing that's what we say down south, to show you some of the faces of the cooperative program. I want you to welcome with me today Keith and Paige Weezer, who come today on a part of the Resonate Church Network to share a word. First, we're going to see a video, and then I want you to pay very close attention to what is said in the following moments. You never know when God is going to speak. Moses saw a burning bush. Paul was thrown off a horse. 
We were in a football stadium in the third quarter of the Washington State versus Oregon game. Surrounded by 20,000 cheering college students, I sensed God say, look at all this potential. I want to do something here, but you have to think bigger. Truth is, our vision was a stadium full of saved people, but God saw a stadium full of sent people. We just wanted to start a college church, but God desired to start a movement of collegiate churches. On August 19th, 2007, in Pullman, Washington, a part of the country where churches are few and college students in those churches are even fewer, we launched Resident, targeting Washington State University. Within a year, we planted again at the University of Idaho. In 2012, we started our third site at the heart of WSU's campus, and it immediately became our largest Sunday gathering. Five years after launching Resonate, we were a church of 600 people, 20 staff, and three sites. God was using us to reach the most unreached among the most unreached. We were being celebrated as a success story, and we were feeling the temptation to slow down and settle. But we couldn't shake that voice in the stadium saying, I want to do something, but you have to think bigger. Still not sure what Think Bigger meant, we committed to send out two of our best leaders, Jacob and Jessica Dahl. In 2013, my wife Jess and I were featured at the Southern Baptist Convention in Houston as we prepared to plant at Central Washington University. God used the convention and the relationships surrounding it to clarify the vision he had for our church. I'll never forget our staff retreat that next year. One night, Keith had us open our Bibles to the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke 16, and we talked about our lives in light of eternity. Then the question was posed, if Jesus is precious, hell is real, and a choice is demanded, what does that mean for our church? It means there must be urgency in our obedience. There must be boldness in our gospel proclamation. There must be multiplication at every level. Disciples, churches, staff, leaders, everything has to multiply. It means we must do whatever it takes to get the gospel to college students. Because there's nothing more powerful than the gospel, and there's nothing more strategic than college students being mobilized. It was settled. We had a vision, and it was bigger than any of us imagined. Resonate Church, an urgent, multiplying, collegiate church planting movement, planting 21 churches by the year 2021. The clarity of this vision has led us to mobilize our people. Since 2007, we've sent out 1,200 students on mission trips. We've sent a long-term team to East Asia to reach college students. Over 350 students have committed to church planting. Since 2007, we've seen over 700 college students baptized. The story doesn't end with the campus. It begins with the campus. Students graduate and move to cities as leaders. We are giving them a gospel worldview so they can shape and influence culture. If we win the campus, we win the world. Sometimes we think we're too young, too inexperienced, too uneducated. But then we're reminded about missionaries who've gone before us. Hudson Taylor was 21, Lottie Moon was 23, and C.T. Studd was 25 when they sailed to China. And Adoniram Judson was 24 when he went to Burma. We're seeing God raise up a generation of young missionaries who said we will raise our own salaries, we'll transfer universities, we'll take classes from the field, we'll leave our friends and our families and we'll do what's uncomfortable, what doesn't seem wise, we will do whatever it takes. The only thing we won't do is sit on the sidelines waiting to get old enough while a generation dies without Christ. Through the power of the cooperative program and the strategy of the SIN network, we are not alone in this work. Working together with Southern Baptist, our goal is to see all 403 major universities in North America with a local church on campus reaching students. Because college students plus church planting plus multiply everything equals kingdom movement. We don't believe we're special. We just believe it's our turn. Our turn to obey. Our turn to be sent. Our turn to do whatever it takes to spread the gospel, make disciples, and plant churches whatever it takes to make Jesus known in our generation. It's our turn. God is doing something bigger, and we all have a role to play. The next time you see a stadium full of students, just think of what God could do if those students were mobilized for the sake of the gospel.
Amen. Amen. If you win the campus, you can win the world. 700 baptisms. You saw the face of the cooperative program. Stay tuned because this afternoon in Executive Committee Part 2, you'll see the actual faces of the cooperative program. And so we'll have more of that story later this afternoon. You'll get to meet some people. You want to be here for that. You will see how God is working as multiplication is occurring. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Mr. President, this concludes Executive Committee Report Part 1. Thank you, sir.